Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Lou. We are here today to talk about a very exciting topic and something that's near and dear to my heart, as many of our programs are. Yeah, but right from the get-go, I'd like to give you a little bit about community TV. Community TV is made up of volunteers, and it's made up of people that have a heart for the community of Santa Cruz, and it's specifically for our community and our county. Uh, I have been doing the show for about five years, and I love every part of it, but today uh, we talk about something that, again, is very special, and it's Cabrillo College. Cabrillo College has got a history of uh, serving our community in so many ways. And today we have uh, the president and superintendent of Cabrillo College, Laurel Jones, with us. And we have the chair of the, of the board of directors, Gary Reese. And we'd like to say, for, first of all, thank you for both of you for being here today. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Pleasure. We're going to get into some really good topic. And the topic is Measure Q. And what it is is we're going to talk about how that funding works for community college and there's going to be a measure that's hopefully going to be that will be on the ballot uh come up for the next time that the voters have a chance to vote on it and it's something that brings in revenue that's well needed for the community and we're going to talk a little bit about that but i want to talk to you um, about uh first of all some of the background of each of our our guests they come highly qualified and they are some of the movers and the shakers in our community. First of all, Dr. Laurel Jones is the president and superintendent of Cabrillo College. She brings a distinguished 25-year community college education background uh, to Cabrillo. She was recently the president of the Mission College of Santa Clara, and she taught English originally as an instructor at Mount St. Antonio College of Walnut, California. She is uh, committed to giving access to the quality of education that we have to all members of our community. Coming from Silicon Valley, her special interests are higher education and includes an emphasis on technology and partnership uh, with businesses. She is all, she's a member of, of many organizations and she has been uh, impressed with the high uh, transfer ability of students going to Cabrillo, going to UC uh, Berkeley, going to UC Santa Cruz, going to UCLA. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And Carrillo brings some very interesting things, but they need some funding right now, and that's what Measure Q will do to upgrade some of the facilities. Uh, my personal experience, I'm constantly taking classes there, uh, and I've been doing that for close to 40 years. Uh, my wife and her sister went to the hygiene program some years ago. My son, as a high school student, took classes there. My daughter-in-law, who, uh, who is a, a school psychologist, did all her lower division, and my daughter and my other daughter that's a chiropractor did all her pre-med there. So Cabrillo College, again, has got a special place in my heart. But let's talk about uh, a couple of the things that are important, which is funding, which is upgrade of some of our facilities at Cabrillo. And if we can first start out with what is, uh, uh, Dr. Jones, what is uh, Measure Q about? And if you can give a little background as to uh, why it's needed. So Measure Q is a general obligation bond. We are asking for $310 million that we are assuring the voters that will last 20 years for us to be able to renovate, repair, and upgrade many of our 50 plus year facilities that we have on campus. The intent of those upgrades is not to add any new buildings, but to take our existing space and create a learning environment for our students to be able to not only meet 21st century needs for employment, but to help them get into those 21st century transfer classes that mm -hmm. they're all going to be going to. The way that the bond came about was a three-year process. The college has a very rigorous planning process in that we have several committees that work on, in their own expertise areas for technology and uh, facilities repair. Those groups got together and looked at many of our plans, many of our program plans, and even our educational master plan to ascertain whether or not we needed additional funding to be able to continue to meet the demands and the needs of our students. In that three years, <clears throat> at the end, it was taken to our College Planning Council, which is our highest participatory governance council, that we recommended and requested as an institution to consider going out for a general obligation bond. 
the College Planning Council agreed to that. That council is made up of our union members, our Senate members, students, classified, confidentials, and administrators. And at that point in time, we took that uh, request forward to the board. In the meantime, one of the things that we did to ensure that our community would uh, understand the need and to kind of get a sense of where they were at, we did a feasibility polling. And in that feasibility polling, we were able to ascertain whether or not the goals that we thought were important for our students was resonating with the goals that our community thought was important as well. And it certainly did. Um, part of what our community told us was that they loved the college and were so grateful for that. But they also let us know that transfer was extremely important. Sure. So it's been a, it's been a three-year process. And within that process, one other thing I would tell you is in the last three years, one of the things that's changed dramatically for the college is where our students are demanding their courses. Right now, our students are demanding courses in science, in technology, in engineering, and mm -hmm. in mathematics. Mm -hmm. And part of our goal with this money, besides the general renovation and repair and technology upgrade, is to be able to provide large lecture classrooms and increased lab space for students to be able to take those very high demand sections. So we're also trying to prepare for their future by giving them classrooms that will get them to where they want to go quicker. So, you know, you brought something up that uh, caught my attention, and there's a feasibility. In other words, you go out to the general populace, and you're asking the people that would make this happen, what do you think about it? Yes. And tell me the outcome of that feasibility study uh, from our, uh, our populace in the community that's going to be largely involved in the Cabrillo College uh, whole, whole process of, of taking classes, of, of seeing what happens here, uh, and, and why is something like that important? So what was interesting about the feasibility study was that it allowed us to get sort of a pulse from our community on what we were doing well and how we were perceived as a college, but to also find out from them whether our vision for the future made sense to them. A couple things came out of that. The first was that we had a very high rate of approval, which, um, as I said before, we're very grateful for. Our community is a huge part um, of what makes us successful, and we are, consider ourselves um, stewards of the community as well. Sure. But what was interesting also was that in the feasibility study, one of the things that came out was that our vision for, for example, our veterans program resonated highly with our community members. Let's talk about the veterans program if we could to okay. interject. Okay. Uh, we've got a, a great amount of veterans in our community because of a fort or having, uh, you know, had been an active uh, fort. And, and I think that there are a lot of good things happening in the Monterey Bay in general mm -hmm. uh, with our, our community in terms of veterans. Uh, and, and, you know, as a side note, um, you know, we've got one of the best medical facilities uh, probably in the country, you mm -hmm. know, just over the hill uh, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. to our veterans. And we also have a facility at Fort Ord. We have another one uh, on 41st Avenue, a small clinic. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, com the community at large uh, it realizes that we've got some veterans here. How is Cabrillo tied in and how are they serving our community of veterans? So our veterans population is actually growing um, and part of what we're trying to do with our vets is to provide not only a transfer and job experience in terms of their education but also to provide a safe learning environment because many of our veterans come back with um, the request for additional kinds of services. That might be counseling, for example. Sure. It might be working with someone who could talk a little bit about health. So part of what we would like to be able to continue to do for our vets is to provide a center that's almost uh, a one-stop shop that also provides them a little more confidentiality <coughs> when they have those kinds of conversations that they would like to have about their future. Mm -hmm. We also are very interested in doing um, increased outreach to our community services so that our vets know what resources are available to them. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, part of our process is to make sure that the vets know their financial aid process mm. um, and how they can pay for their education and where that comes into play, especially if they're going into transfer. Some of our vets actually um, don't put down that they're vets right away in mm. order to be able to sort of gauge where their financial aid might be coming from. So again, part of our process to, is to not only ensure their success at Cabrillo, but to ensure their success when they move on from us. Okay, very good. In terms of uh, bringing in uh, the coffers, uh, extra money, I think one question might, might be, uh, you know, in many people's minds that are listening, our listening audience, 
well, well, doesn't Cabrillo have funding? Uh, doesn't, don't we already uh, get tuition dollars? Um, why is it that there's an additional or any amount of money that is needed for this compared to why can't you use it from someplace else? How does that whole thing work? And maybe Gary, being the chair of the, of the board, might be able to chime in on that. I've got a, an opinion about it, but it's, it's probably an old one. Uh, and it might not be that accurate. But I know monies that are earmarked for certain things are just for that. And, and so we can talk a little bit about that. Does, does Cabrillo have a lot of money to do the things that this measure is going to bring in already? Community colleges as a whole differ from the UC system or from CSU uh, system in that the state actually does provide funds for those, for those groups uh, for building projects for repair and maintenance and um, the, the kinds of things that this bond would, would cover. For community colleges, the, the state legislature, in its in infinite wisdom years ago, um, started getting away from funding the kinds of projects that we're asking to be funded in Measure Q and said to the communities, if you want these things, then the community should support it. And it's not unlike the uh, elementary schools. Um, and actually, the, the reason that uh, co community colleges fall into the Prop 98 funding is because you always you were here it referred to as K-14, and that those that group of education um, is funded in the same way. We do receive monies from from the state, which is basically we pay our property taxes, send it to the state, they bring it back to us, uh, and those funds go primarily for I believe at Cabrillo it's nearly 90 percent salaries. Uh, for our instructors, for our classified staff, for the people that 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 make the college work, um, and so that doesn't leave a whole lot left for Pacific Gas and Electric and other things like that that we have to do, and so from time to time, community colleges and elementary school districts will go out and ask the community for their financial support uh, in uh, in a, a general obligation bond. Sometimes it's a parcel tax. This happens to be a general obligation bond, and Normally, community colleges over the state go out about every six years uh, to fund their needs for infrastructure, whether it's building new buildings or uh, maintaining and re uh, more than maintaining, repairing uh, older structures. Cabrillo, nearly 300,000 square feet of our uh, facilities were built in the 60s and the 70s. And so systems are coming to the end of their useful life. Sure. And so, so, so let me back up. How long? When? When was the last time we had anything like this? When? When the college was built, or? Or, are we? There was yes. There was a bond initially when the college was built that would fund the pro, You know the, the the physical structures and the infrastructure. Sure. And I I really can't remember all of the bonds that have been done. I've been on the board for about twenty three years, and so I've seen the last two measure C and measure D. And when the community drives down Soquel Avenue, um, you're really looking at pretty much brand new buildings. Mm -hmm. These were built from the proceeds of Measure D, yes. which included the Student Activity Center, the uh, the, th the wonderful Crocker Theater, uh, the the fine arts or, or the the uh, visual arts uh, facilities that that you see, and those sort of line Soquel Avenue along with parking structures, which sure. we need. Sure. Um, but when you get back in, that's when you're talking, when you're looking at the older buildings. As I said, some built in the 60s. And those structures have been maintained, they've been painted, filters changed on heating and air conditioning systems, but at some point the heating and air conditioning system has to be replaced. Sure. And, uh, and uh, those kinds of, of funds are what, th that are, are provided by these, these bonds. Okay. Um, so the last time we went out was in, as I said, was in uh, 2004. So it was 12 years ago. Um, if you do the math, 2004 to two th six years would have been 2010. Yeah. That wasn't exactly a wonderful time, uh, right in the middle of the Great Recession, yeah, right. to go and ask our community for help. And we also looked at how can we make this a little more even going forward so we're not constantly going back to the community. And as Laurel said, that's why we looked at really a 20-year horizon. And more and more community colleges are doing this. Um, and the, the bond will not be issued all at once. Yeah. The bond will be issued over about a 20-year period 
every three to four years depending on how fast we actually can get projects built. Uh, proposition 39 um, is a complicated proposition and it is rightfully so um, designed to uh, to be very visible to the mm -hmm. community and to uh, to provide protections to the community to un to ensure that when we say we're going to do something that's what we're going to do. Uh, Prop 39, this bond cannot be used for salaries okay. uh, or pension augmentations or any of that. We have to get that out of our general fund. And we're, and we're on our own for the most part. In other words, uh, in terms of being able to take money from somewhere else to do things like this, it just simply is prohibited. And it's different than what happens at the UCs and the, uh, and the Cal States. They get money, let's say, out of the general fund to do these kinds of things. The community colleges have to do this kind of stuff. So community colleges throughout the state do these kinds of things yeah. for renovation. So it's nothing unusual. Not at it's all. It's exactly mm -hmm. what was intended for this kind of money to go towards uh, improvements, but it has to come through uh, th this kind of tax, uh, uh, additional yes, tax. Yes, mm -hmm. and and I want to emphasize the the long range nature of of the bond. Um, as I said, rather than going back to the community every five or six years, as sure. a lot of community colleges do, um, there are costs associated with that. There sure. are campaign costs, there are legal costs, and so what we took was a different route to say let's do a 20-year plan. Let's look forward. Let's see what the college is going to need, what our facilities need. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough, by the, by the last issuance of the part of the bond, um, the facilities that you're looking at now that are so wonderfully new will be 30 <laughs> years old. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of that, mm -hmm. there's actually money planned that would be going back into the, the bright, shiny new buildings that you see now mm -hmm. because systems will have come to the end of their useful life. Sure. And so, as Laurel said, a tremendous amount of planning went in to determining the needs. And in fact, the needs exceed this bond amount. Um, but um, one of the other things about a Prop 39 bond is that it's limited. Uh, in the amount that you can you can do because it's related to the assessed valuation of the district. Um, very complicated situation, but it's very visible. Um, it's, it, you know, the tax rate statement is part of the ballot statement so that the, the voters can go and look and see what will happen. The, the overall estimated cost is sometimes referred to as, you know, because it is like your mortgage. If you take out a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage and if you look at the at the loan if you can bear to look at it the old the amount that you're paying back is probably over eight hundred thousand sure and so it's a long-term debt that's being used to finance long-term projects <clears throat> what kind of uh, questions uh, will voters be asked um, at the June election I mean what are they looking at in terms of whether they uh, tick a yes or no on this um, you know, what kind of cost would it be to the average, uh, let's say, resident of Santa Cruz County that's a homeowner? And maybe Laurel can, uh, can answer that. He actually has that number better than I. The, the, uh, the actual assessed value, uh, it's a, on the assessed valuation, which is not what you paid for your home unless you just bought it yesterday. So, so uh, in a sense, it's a, a much, much lesser of an amount than the yes. actual value because the assessed value... Uh, is, is is always less. Yes. And, and if you have an older home, it could be way less. Way less. Yes. And and um, that is one of the reasons, I think, that the Prop 39 uh, bonds are, uh, are utilized because they do, um, by nature of the fact that the assessed valuation on older homes, which are usually owned by seniors sure. because they've stayed in their homes, have lesser value. Mm -hmm. So the actual value will be, the actual cost will be $23.27 per $100,000 of assessed valuation. Is that per year? Per year, well, every that's, year. That's very minimal, very minimal. Um, you know. We're not, you know, I don't have the numbers on the average assessed valuation in the district, but mm -hmm. in talking to people, you know, 500,000 seems to be a, an average assessed valuation of people that I've talked to. Sure. So that'd be about 120, you know, maybe $10 a month. So, you know, yeah. don't have two Starbucks a, a, a month and you've paid for the bond. Yeah, that's amazing. It's a very minimal amount of money. That's amazing. Well, so it looks like that, first of all, it sounds like we need it. Um, it hasn't happened for some time that we've had any kind of uh, renovations of this type. 
There's no place else to really get the money at all. Uh, and, and, and on top of that, it seems to me that that is a very minimal cost. And, you know, and, and I have to say, it, with, with Cabrillo's reputation and what they've done for our community and the people that they reach out to, I, virtually everybody in our community knows something about Cabrillo, and it's all positive. Generally speaking, uh, I've always seen anybody uh, that's ever had uh, these kinds of issues, uh, they're always behind these bonds because it's about education, it's about our future, it's about our young people being able to come to a school and have, in my mind, some of the best education in the country mm -hmm. right here at Cabrillo with minimal cost. And that certainly is something I think that as the voters go to the polls, they must consider. Yeah, it's an additional cost, but it's so minimal. And the, 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 I think that the payoff is, so, is, is awesome. At least in our family, it's been that way. And if I had to do it all over again, I would vote every single one of these bonds into play because of what our family has gotten out of it. Cabrillo does such a great job. Um, I will say, somebody asked, came up and asked me something about, you know, well, why, are, why are you supporting it? Because they know me. I don't have children. Yes. But I totally believe in public education, mm -hmm. and um, it's a foundation of our country is public education. And I encourage my friends who have co college-age kids to go to community college, particularly Cabrillo, sure. first. Um, UC and CSU are wonderful institutions. They have their, their absolutely, they have their place. Um, but for the first two years, many kids coming out of high school, they don't know what they want to do. They're a little lost. Sure. And our instructors, our, you know, our, our, our teachers are there because they want to teach. Yeah. They're not there because they want to do research. They're not there because they want to publish, yeah. although many of them do and, and are, are renowned around the, the world. Yeah. Um, but they're there because they love teaching. Mm. And I hear so many stories, and we all do, Laurel hears more than I do, of kids that were lost, they'd gone some, maybe into a bigger UC system, they're in a class of 450 kids, they're, they're, they don't know what to do. They come to Cabrillo, or a community college, but we're talking Cabrillo, sure. um, and they find themselves. Mm -hmm. And those stories aren't unique. Yeah. Uh, the other thing about community colleges is we provide an opportunity for so many of our students they are the first person in their family to go to college yes. because they're from minorities. They have they, they, they have limited access to to public education. This is their way out. This is their way up, and we're really mm -hmm. proud of what we do about that. And again, we start. We have our foundation has programs that start with kids in sixth grade mm -hmm. uh, to help them understand the value of a college education because. Anymore, yeah. the high school education is not what you have to have as a minimum. It has to be at least an AA sure. or a BA. And so it's, it's vitally important to the well-being of our country um, and, and our community to have, you know, edu well-educated kids that can go on and come back. Many of them come back to our community, and they're the people that make, make us run. So uh, community colleges are exciting to me. And like I said, I've been on the board for... 23 years it's totally voluntary and many of my colleagues have been there at least uh, you know as almost as long as that so <laughs> it's not sure. it's not it's a labor of love for us um, and we're excited to do it and we're excited to try to to uh, educate the voters on the importance of of supporting this measure in June it sounds like we've got the community behind us on this and it sounds like there's a need and it sounds like there couldn't be a better cause out there uh, except for the fact that we've got our education, uh, you know, it, it, that it's so important being enhanced in some fashion. Uh, and and I, I like that. I mean, that to me, there's nothing more important. To me, that's the most important thing we can do out there uh, for our future is to educate our young people. There's always a, a, a great hero story about somebody that came up that probably would have never gone to college. Mm -hmm. They went to Cabrillo, they came back, got their doctorate degrees, mm -hmm. and they're in leadership. Uh, roles, they're uh, running companies, they're CFOs, they're CEOs, uh, and many of the times when I've seen those people in person and asked them, they attribute it to what Cabrillo did for them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm always blown away at the personal mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. We're actually, believe it or not, we're coming close to the end of the show. If we can, it, it goes fast, uh, if we can talk maybe about a minute, a minute and a half or so, um, and something that you can leave our listening audience with. So when they go to the polls, they can remember these last few words from each of you. And if we can uh, yeah. start with you, Laurel. So I would actually start by saying thank you to our community. Um, we are so grateful 
at Cabrillo for all the community support that we have received in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want the community to know that we're here to serve. The other thing I would say is that Measure Q is going to help Cabrillo maintain its quality education. Mm -hmm. And part of that is going to be meeting its future. Mm -hmm. And our future is really about facilities and technology mm -hmm. that help our students not only achieve but go beyond that expectation level of just the minimum. We want to provide the maximum. And part of what we want to be able to do with our students is not only prepare them for transfer, but to actually get them into jobs where they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm incredibly proud of Cabrillo College. I'm incredibly proud of our faculty members and our staff members. They're passionate about this college. They know how important their work is. We all know that education is really one of our very last freedoms. Mm -hmm. I think the community college system is a perfect example of that. And we would continue to appreciate the support of our community as we have Cabrillo College meet its future in its 21st century. That Excellent. would be my aim. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. You're welcome. And Gary. One. Well, there's not much I can add to that other than that um, it's amazing if you start to ask how many uh, people are affected by graduates from Cabrillo College mm -hmm. in this community. Mm -hmm. If you, um, as as we get older, and I certainly am in one of those categories, um, when you go to the doctor, the the odds are that you the person that checks you in went to Cabrillo College. <laughs> that's the that's odds true. are that the nurse <laughs> that's, that's, that's taking care of you at Dominican Hospital, that's true. or your that's hygienist, <laughs> like or my your wife is. Hygienist. <laughs> so Cabrillo does so it affects so many people in so many ways in this community. Um, that, um, as, as Laurel said, we are grateful for the past support and uh, uh, we just want to continue the quality that, that Cabrillo is known for. Excellent. This, this will enable us to do that. Thank you so much. Our distinguished guests, again, have uh, done so much to bring information to us, the community of Santa Cruz County, about, again, I call it the jewel of, of the Monterey Bay, and that is Cabrillo College. I want to thank all our volunteers. Again, I'm Lou Tuosto, and uh, this is Let's Talk with Lou. Our volunteers, uh, today we had uh, several of them. We had six. Uh, on graphics, we had Linda uh, Janikus. And we had, uh, as a director, Keith Gudger. Uh, we had audio was John Maurer, a camera person, another was Annie Newman, and another camera person was Karen Gudger. And again, we do those kinds of things through volunteers. The reason that we can bring uh, programming such as this to you is because of community uh, TV's commitment to this community. Uh, we ask for your input. If you have some input in terms of what kind of programming you would like, feel free to email us, feel free to call us, uh, feel free uh, to, to come down to the station. To station. Uh, the uh, station, again, is a new location. Uh, we've moved from the old downtown, uh, and we're on Soquel Avenue now, and, and come down and take a, a tour, and there's always somebody here, almost all the time. So feel free to do that kind of thing, and get involved in our community. Uh, Cabrillo College, awesome organization. Go to the polls, vote. Go to the polls, 